So I'll put together a simple little scene. So there's our house. And what I, what I want to show you here, what I want to demonstrate in particular, is, is it's all about this end here, this end of the house, okay? If we were to, I'm going to do it physically in a moment to show you, but I just want to verbally explain this first. If I were to make a very dark shape behind the back end of the house here, okay, but leave the house at that edge really light in tonal value, that effectively is a hard edge, even though you won't see me painting a, an edge to the, to the end of that house. But what's happening is the tonal exchange, okay, between here and the tonal exchange, uh, sorry, the tonal exchange between here and here, the house in the background, very, very, well, they must be the same. Doesn't matter about the colour. Don't don't think about colour here, because um, it doesn't matter what the colour is. But the total value here, let's call it three, okay? And the total value at the end of the house here is also three. That becomes a soft edge. We we would consider that to be a soft edge, because there's nothing to tell you where the background starts and where the building stops, and, or vice versa. Now then. If we come to this front edge, because this is the closer edge of the building to us, okay, forget forget the nearest corner, which is this one for the moment, okay, forget that for a moment. Um, but let's look at this territory here. Imagine if there was a woodland, and we've already I've already explained the back end of the building. Imagine if the same line of trees or hedge hedgerow runs all the way behind this building like this, okay? Now then. Where is the tonal exchange back here is the same, a tonal value of three, tonal value of three. Here, we bring the house forward by making sure that there is a tonal jump. So we might go tonal value one or two, whereas the tonal value over here is three, four, five even, maybe even six. Let's say- There we are. Really, really weak mix. So let's say that the light is hitting this end of the building let me just draw that in so the light coming from the left and it's hitting this end of the building so you can expect that to be really bright but this wall will be in uh, some soft shadow so let's shadow let's sorry shadow that, that out and if i go a little bit more with the blue than the warm color then that should um that should also work so there's a tonal value at the moment of about three okay um watch what i do i just drag i drag the same bit of paint into the background let's do the roof as well back here and this now i'm in I'm in a territory here that is really the, um, the 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 area behind. I could even just change the color if I really wanted to. If I just pick up a bit of warm burnt sienna, just to just to put a bit of warmth this end of the building, okay. But I'm I'm making I'm being very careful to keep the tonal value. This is a big tree back here, like this, okay. I've been very careful to keep the tonal value the same, okay? Now then, watch what happens here. Now, it doesn't mean to say you can't paint when this is dry. You can't paint in a, you know, a tree trunk just to give some definition back there. But watch what happens at this end of the building. I increase the strength of the paint, okay? So more paint, less water. Just mixing equal amounts for the for, for the sake of this demonstration. Mixing equal amounts. And this is where we would get the big tonal exchange here. Another tree similar to this one. You paint around your shape like this. I mean, look at that. It that 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 is now, you know, there's no question here. Let's put the window in, which would be quite dark unless it was reflecting a lot of light you, you can put a few little highlights in there you know with your fingernail whatever but that's and, it, and as we move around this nearer edge around here this this end of the building 
we can intensify some of these tones. You might get a little ground lying shrub here in front of the house. Always a strong, dark tone, okay? Like that. But when you get to about where my finger is and back, everything pales off. So that is a soft edge. It's really all we're doing is we're, we're um, using tonal value to create a soft edge. It's not three houses, two quite close together. These two will have chimneys just to make them a bit of a focal point. Um, and this one won't. So this is my focal point. This is where my hard edges will be. This is where on this building here, things will get a lot softer. We'll put a tree back here. We'll have a tree near the focal point houses over here like this. But um, so let me show you uh, in th th what we're dealing with here is more about balance. Um, so I'm not really uh, what I'm doing is I'm not really trying to tell you what area is closest to us and what areas is what area is further away. This is purely for aesthetics. This is using soft edges, hard edges, purely for aesthetics. I'll just go into this this tree in the background here, okay, leaving hard edges, because to keep saying, this is my focal point territory. And this is where we would expect to get hard edges. So, put a couple of windows in this house for the moment. But what I wanna do now, I wanna leave all those hard edges around these little cottages. I want to soften anything that comes anywhere near this cottage here so i bring the edges in like this i soften the edges off uh, i lose the edges at the uh, around the roofs here i lose I even lose the edges at the top of my trees up here so just a lot more water will take the definition out of those shapes now that is just a, that that's just um, what we would refer to as achieving an aesthetic balance between hard edges and soft edges. Uh, yeah. So if I were to put a little bench where people sit, these two would have hard a hard edge quality about them. Okay. Um, and the harder you go with windows, the darker you go in some of those areas, the more your uh, focal point territory is going to pop out. But I just as a caveat, um, every painting requires probably something a little more than just the. If if you were to paint every one of your paintings like this, a very very obvious focal point territory, and have everything else completely diffused, that's not going to offer much entertainment to your viewer. So you find an area somewhere where you just make something else. It could it could be something as simple as a little shrub over here on the on the ground so you go a little bit darker with a bit of bit bit of definition see if i can make that a bit bluer there so you could you could have this little subdiffuge this little uh, secondary plot your your support uh acting um character over here but you you be careful not to overdo it something like that would be sufficient yeah. On to the next thing. So we've looked at um, using edges, controlling tonal values around edges for uh, proximity, for achieving the proximity of, you know, to tell us that that end of the building down there is further away from us than this end of the building. OK, so that's the use of tonal exchange. It's still I'd still think of edges uh, that to me is all about edges even though it's sort of slightly uh the message is slightly sort of hidden because i'm talking about tonal exchanges that's about an edge a particular edge that's further away from us than this this these edges up here now i've talked about edges for a diff slightly different purpose here i've talked about edges and the role they play in um first creating an aesthetic balance okay um this isn't so much because these two houses here are no closer to us 
than this little cottage here. All three properties are about the same distance away from us as the viewer. But so it's not it's it, 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 it's not about what we were looking at just a moment ago. It's not about creating a different proximity. This is about making sure your viewer is looking at this particular area of your painting. OK, so that's where edges in this case do a different job. I want to go... I'm going to show you a couple of different edges, lines, call them what you want. Uh, a line effectively is an edge. And I'll go travel from A to B. Do a couple of these, A to B, A to B. And I'm going to show you the type of um, some different edges you can actually make. Now then, we know that we very rarely use, this is one edge we probably don't use very much, and that is a solid unbroken line. Uh, when you create edges that don't break, usually due to having too much water in the brush, That's probably the most boring line you could ever possibly make, okay? Um, that might be the line of the edge of a, a roof on a building. It might be the line that you've created at the edge of a road or a path. You know, you imagine you're doing a little woodland scene and you've decided to uh, paint the line of the edge of your path like this. You know, it goes off to the right. You've got trees on either side of your woodland path there. Um, if you find yourself having almost accidentally made that sort of mark, the first thing to do is to go in and attack it. I take a, a brush with water in it and start breaking it up by any means you can see fit. Um, I, I just applied a bit of water to it, but you could go in like this and scrape, scrape into that line. Whatever you do, you would break Make sure that that line is more interesting by breaking it up. That's immediately more more in, in, um, interesting, that that line, as, as it stands like that. I'll go in a bit closer, folks, I think, for this. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can have a better idea. It'll go blurry for a moment. Bear with me. Now, you can see what I've done, I hope, there. You know, I travelled across the paper with a brush with... Yes, lots of paint in it, but too much water. The line didn't break until I did something about it by dropping water into it, um, scraping into it. Of course, that's got to be done while it's still wet. Mm -hmm. um, do so we... how do we avoid it in the first place? How do we, if we, if we want to break this line up in a more uh, interesting way, what we can do is this. Um, oh, sorry, we're talking about softening. I, I'm going to show you what is meant, what we think about mo most of the time about softening a line. So let's travel from A to B, and I will just put it in like I did the first one, sort of a little bit too perfect, okay? So that's not a good line anyway. Um, I'll show you what how I, I – we'll get there, folks, I, I promise you. We'll get to how, how I normally paint my lines. But I want to show you – how to affect the line first of all so soft to physically soften a line that is too hard okay we would simply take another brush and i would drop water say above it just about here okay and and i and i would just take the brush ever so carefully up against the edge and what you're doing is you're affecting your your the water is uh, making contact with the pigment the paint and that then becomes a soft edge, okay? And you can soften that edge out as much as you like. You more, the more you go into that pigment here, the, the more you will soften that, that line. You can be really brutish about it, in fact, and just go in like this. You'll still end up with a line, but now it's much softer. That's, the, that's physically softening your edges by use of uh, brush and water, okay? Then uh, that, that there is another way, and that's simply the broken delivery. We're talking sort of dry brush work here, because dry brush can offer a soft, a very similar effect to hard edge. So 
So why don't I travel from A to B using two different techniques? I'll put in an ugly line that I have that um for, for a couple of inches, okay? One like we did here, a perfect line, if you want to call it that. Then I'll go the next section. Let's say we'll have a nice solid delivery of of uh, line here, which I will have to affect. I will have to do one of the things I did up here too. Uh, but then on this middle section here, okay, between here and here, I'll deliver a broken line, which is more about controlling the paint and water in the brush. I mean, that, that's going to work on small, in small percentages. That could work in some situations. Um, but here, so I don't like, imagine I just painted that in and I didn't, that's not what I was after. And I realized that um, it didn't look uh, correct. It didn't look natural. So what I'll do here is I'll load up the same two colors, but this time with much less water. Okay, I'll take some of the water out. And I want to travel from here to here with something more broken like that. That's like a wall with light on it. That's a wall dead and it's just dark and flat over here, this section. But this wall here. Now, you can, of course, offer a little bit of this into a section of that. It might be something like that. And that can really help. That can make things look much uh, more um, sophisticated is probably the word I'm looking for. Um, so. Um, so. Let me do a version down here because it's you. It's not just you. Don't have to keep heavy paint. I I've put got a lot of water in this brush now, and I'm going to do a version of this, only a much paler. Okay, see? Do you see how the dry brush technique does not always have to be a lot of paint? It can be a much weaker. Um. It can be, sorry, I'm just uh, adjusting my brush here to, to get the water out. It can be um, it can be a much paler broken delivery. You won't go much darker than that because that was nearly that one there was nearly all paint and very little water. But 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 those three, it's the same effect. It's the same delivery. It's a broken delivery. But look at how much darker the top one is compared to these three. And these three, I've just added more water and then taken the water out. So that's more paint. This is less paint, less paint, less paint. OK, so um, let's do uh, let's break this third section into all three. OK, so we'll start off. Let, let's put the unbroken bit somewhere about here. That's paint and water. Let's change the brush now. Pick up the um, the dry brush mix. Um, and there's the dry brush section of that wall. Let's put um, one of the, a version like this, an area of the wall that's getting a lot more light. So what I'm doing is I just put more, much more water in this brush and I'm taking most of it out. And that should give me something like that. Do a, a little scene. Let's put a scene together. And I'll try to use these. We'll, we'll use like a, a field with a building. The focal point. So I will darken, because there's an angle on this house, the nearest corner being this one, which I don't want to draw in. But the nearest uh, corner of this house, nearest part of this house to us is this corner here, that one there. So we can make this dark, slightly darker area at the front end of the house and, a, and an exchange of tonal value that, that is equal back here. That's we'll put a slightly darker shrub here like we did in our practice session. We'll have a bit of a wall, perhaps. Um, imagine this is a a nice newly ploughed field. Um, and then we'll, we'll decide what to do with the background, whether we want a little, some rolling hills in the back, give it a bit of sky. Let's see what we can get just by practicing, um, practicing what we know. 
And I'll just go up a brush size. So I'm doing a, a larger area of things. Uh, I'll try to show you what how I use some of these things we just talked about in the sky. Well, let's put a bit of water up here in the sky for a minute. And we'll have... We'll have a sky that's got a bit of a shape to it, brings us in into the uh, towards the building here, the farm. Yeah, it's, so what I do in these areas, so as to not have too many hard edges in my sky shapes, I just picked up some clean water with this brush and I'll land the brush here where there's no paint and I'll just move the brush around. If I want to leave a hard edge somewhere, I can. But what I'm doing really is I'm just teasing into the edges of the paint that I delivered. Okay, bring that down. Maybe have a little bit of warmth at the base of the sky down here. Something like that. I'll paint the um I'll paint the field now because um that gives the area between the sky and the field a, a chance to uh stay uh, to dry out, sorry. So there's single brush mark, another single brush line. Um Take a little bit of the cooler color from this puddle up here that I've that, that's on the go, and we'll just just run a little bit of something cooler down here at the base. Um, just keeping my eye on things going on in my sky. Some of it I quite like, but I don't like that little run down necessarily there. I'll use my tissue to soften some areas and make some cloud-like shapes. Take the light out at the base of the sky down there. Like that. Now, I'm just gonna go down a brush size and we'll just do this line that's going to be the uh, the 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 wall so i'm loading up with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue see if we can get the blue to register so that's quite wet so if i were to put my wall in now okay this is this is what we've just been talking about in practice if i was to put my line my wall in sorry with this load i would end up with that hideous solid line so what I do is I take that off most of it, nearly all of it, and I try to get this brush delivering off the belly like that. Now it needs a bit more of the burnt sienna in there. So I've stopped. I haven't picked up any water, just picked up a bit more paint. And there's my there's my broken delivery. There's my wall which I don't feel as though I, I, I necessarily have to, we'll show the wall just through there a little bit as well. Now, I don't feel as though I have to do too much of that because I've loaded the brush correctly in the first place. Um, but you could, you could just say, well, why don't I just pick up a bit of, because it looks very warm, mostly burnt sienna. Why don't I just pick up a slightly, wa a slightly watery version of the blue and just hit that little wall in places just here and there like that, okay? Um, and if it didn't like what I saw, for instance, at the moment, I've got a white band here between the wall and my corn, my soil field, my plowed field. So what I think I'll do is I'm cleaning this brush as I speak. OK, I'm leaving a little bit of water in there. And if I run this line, the 
between in the white of the paper that's the, a line between the uh, cloud field the warm color and the base of the wall that i just painted if i run this brush with its water between the two it's pretty obvious that the brush is going to make contact both on the bottom of it, bottom edge of its fibers with the warm field and the top edge of the brush is going to make slight contact with the base of the wall that will give you a nice soft transition so i'm sort of softening off uh, an area uh, between the, the the soil of the field and the base of the wall and now i can sort of say well i think i probably want to take the warm color up a little bit closer to the to the um to the wall of the field there and that's that's a good way of doing it leaves me a nice little line too as though there's a bit of extra um definition to the furrow that's in the soil there so all these things are usually done the easiest way it's just a simple uh, um a, a, a changing of the brush load now then let's get to our um house i'm going to pick up a mostly blue watery mix here for the side of the building but while i'm painting this side of the building i'm going straight in to those uh, trees at the back okay remember what i'm doing uh, here i'm simply choosing to keep the same tonal value at the back end of of, of that um barn that farmhouse okay so because i do not want to see uh, evidence of that edge that that corner of the house back there is invisible it should be invisible it disappears into the background but the front end here is very different we go in we pick up more paint less water make everything darker probably a bit warmer too because it's closer to us and in goes our tree at the front end here we can even put the window in as dark here like this we can have a little shrub here we'll have that closer shrub that we mentioned to us about here something like that now, it might be too dark but that's okay i can i can still make adjustments it's probably too dark to be honest for for, for the balance of things so i will need to sort of take some of that out but before i do i'm just going to go down to a brush with a point a good point on it and give the um the roof of the house and definition okay now you can if you time it right you can get put the nearest window in not too much water in the brush just uh just mostly dry uh now i'm going to go around my roof here you can travel down this closer corner down the roof partially down the roof there i wouldn't take this line that i'm doing now right to the back end of that building it's just this area here and this area here we'll have a shadow off there onto the roof something like that we'll give the uh roof of the building a little bit of warmth but remember if i give the roof some warmth same thing occurs down here um you sort of lose the tonal value at the back end of the roof there into the background like that uh if you want to get clever you could put some shadow in in this front end but i'm going to leave it like this i'm going to what i'm doing is now i'm taking some of the dark value out of here by a thirsty brush i cleaned this brush okay and i'm just rolling it around in my tree to I'm not just taking paint off i'm thinking about the shape that it's being created when i am moving this paint then I'm, I'm taking paint off to take to reduce the strength to reduce the tonal value but at the same time i'm taking the opportunity to make it look like a tree and there it, it can't you know that that's a, a five minute or ten minute whatever painting um and it's got everything it needs it's got it's got interest it's got a little building it's got the depth where it's where the depth should be um it has detail in the focal point territory which is obviously here it's doesn't look awkward if, if i was to go dark into this tree back here now and not go dark into the house just leave the house pale 
and go you you'd see that that house would look like it'd look awkward it'd look like you know the the eye can't the brain can't work out whether the building's coming this way or not it wouldn't look like the building is going back down in that direction um okay so there's something you can do in your own time folks in you know over and over and over again little scenes like that they can be really delightful you can turn them out you can do lots of them um so all the time don't never waste an opportunity to think well you, you're learning you know that what you're doing this for a purpose um my purpose at the moment is to find my little mount that's it there it is a simple little farm scene 